Tadi saya cuba memanggil Dr. Jaya Balan. Dr. Jaya Balan terkenal sebagai doktor yang merawatkan semua penduduk Bukit Merah yang menjadi sakit zaman dahulu. Memang Dr. Jaya Balan ni ada pendapat kuat pasal kilang Linus yang akan dibuat. Terima kasih ya. Pasal kilang Linus yang akan dibuat kat Haha. Dia dia kuat membantah Linus daripada masuk Malaysia untuk membuang sisa buangan radioaktif tu. Sebab dia dia dengan dengan mata sendiri dia sudah nampak berapa bahaya dan berapa banyak ini ini bahan boleh merosakkan kesihatan masyarakat. Jadi saya harap besok kami boleh buat temu duga dengan dia dan lepas tu sebarkan itu temu duga kepada semua orang. Jadi semua orang boleh dengar berapa bahaya. Ini ini bahan-bahan radioaktif. Tapi makan dulu. Selepas tu memanggil lagi sekali. Dan macam mana? So are you are you in Penang at the moment, doctor? We're in Georgetown right now. Well, we can be here probably maybe until early next week. So maybe until Monday or Tuesday. But doc, but doctor, where, where, if you, I mean, you, you're practicing medicine there, are you? Okay, we, we, we can come there to you. I mean, that's that's not far from here, is it? That's maybe only an hour's drive. Uh, at the, what is it called? What is the name of our hotel called, Kira? Tune Hotel. Yeah, Tune Hotels. Okay, so you'll be back here in in uh, in Georgetown. Do you live in Do you live in Georgetown or Butterworth? Okay, excellent. So, so I can. So I'll, we'll see, I'll, as, as you said, we'll see how it goes. But hopefully, 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 I can see you tomorrow. Okay, excellent. So I will. Uh, yeah, you just send me a message or give me a call when you know more about uh, your availability tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Jai. Itu tadi Dr. Jai Balan. Dia kata besok dia boleh jumpa dengan kami untuk buat temu duga sikit pasal pengalaman dia kat Bukit Merah. Oh, rehat dah? Oh, balik rumah? Oh, ya ke? Okay, tidur sikit lah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Salam, salam perkenalan ya. Oh, okay, okay. You, what my friend nama? Apa tu? Saya punya nama? Ah, Ryan. Ryan. Bowsy. Okay, okay, okay. Jumpa lagi. Ah, jumpa lagi. Mungkin besok kami makan sini lagi sekali. Ah, esok you mari. Ah, okay, okay, okay. For the water. Ah, okay, okay. 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 That guy was from Southern Thailand. ICRP and all these people goes back to the, the, the do we have enough information about this sort of uh, polluter? Uh -huh. We don't have much information. Because it's really quite a new industry, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. certainly outside yeah. of China, it's very new, isn't it? Uh, outside of China. It, it, they were, these industries were available in uh, India, Brazil, they were. But the extent, the very small amount, and the damage has been there. See, the, the thing is, damage is not it's so insidious. You don't get a damage just as, as you would get in, say, very high levels of ionizing radiation. You will get killed, you know, because you, know, you get acute radiation. Yeah? In this case, these are low-level ionizing radiation, low doses. Low doses accumulated, and again, all our information is based on what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki?
so all 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 and that that's got to do with the uh, high levels of uh -huh. radioactivity uh -huh. And uh, you know, and to an extent, a lot of extrapolation here, there, everywhere. And the fact information was a little was kept on the information uh, on this thing for 50 years by the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission mm -hmm. doesn't make things. See, this is a problem, you know. It's there is a legal, political issues that surround the science part of it. Mm -hmm. I may have you look at uh, many. So the science part of it is still evolving because, as you put it correctly, because the industries are new, mm -hmm. technologies are being used, and te these technologies are basically uh, what you do is you use terms like safety measures. You take this, you say safety measures, the radiation protection, and all. The question is, can safety measures be minutely arranged such that you can reduce the exposure to zero? You mm -hmm. can't. Mm -hmm. You cannot. Because mm -hmm. it's very clear what happened in Fukushima. Mm -hmm. The engineering, I've seen engineering in these places. Mm -hmm. The engineering is of very high magnitude. Mm -hmm. Technological fixes are very high. Basically, because you know they are earthquake boom, uh, the what do you call uh, Japan is earthquake boom, you know, and therefore what their buildings are all made in such a way that they can withstand. They, yet a disaster took place. So technologically, they can actually project mm -hmm. this whole thing to say, look. Uh, we have factored everything to the minutest detail, mm -hmm. but in practice that doesn't work because mm -hmm. nature has got its own way mm -hmm. of settling scores, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, science is evolving. Technology has, is, is a fixed thing basically for profits. Mm -hmm. Science need not necessarily be profits. Science is science. So, as you go on, new information comes in. The technology people are not prepared to accept this new information because it affects profits, it affects production, it affects, you know, it means you might have not be able to carry on such uh, production. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to say. So mm -hmm. as it stands, what's happening is that if you look at it, uh, we are very new. Not only you put it correctly, Linus, I don't think has done this. this no, of course not. Not at all. Yeah. This is the first time they are venturing mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi might not have ventured with, uh, into it, but they have a head start compared to Linus mm -hmm. in terms of they were already um, building reactors in the 70s, mm -hmm. 60s, 70s. They were selling reactors. Their technology was more, they, more, uh, they were more technologically uh, sound compared to Linus. And uh, their assurances were insufficient, although what they tell in Bukit Mirror, these people indiscriminately uh, through the waste. Linus also is suggesting the same thing, going to use this radiological product in uh, consumer. Right. Uh, they'll build roads with it. They'll build Right, isn't it? So the, where does it differ? It doesn't differ. So what I'm trying to say is that you can give all sorts of assurance. Mm -hmm. The point is you cannot assure safety. See, again, the, it's very simple. Take the risk. First, first principle is that the safety. The word safe doesn't arise as far as these sort of technology. You know, it's well known wherever a carcinogen is involved, there's no safe levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Everything is accumulative, right? That's right. But there's so no threshold. So that means um, if if it's impossible to have you know safety levels that, uh, or sorry danger levels that approach zero or risks that approach zero, if that's impossible, then um, 
Is it an issue for you of a lack of reward for mm. people, a lack of uh, reward for risk taken? Mm. I mean, if if, Li if Linus were to offer, if Linus were to say, um, here's what we're giving to the people and, and they could show some tangible benefits to people, because obviously currently there's none. That's obviously, an economic benefit that you're offering, a uh -huh. trade-off. Yeah. And obviously currently it's very, very little. There's, they're not paying tax for the first 12 years. Um, I mean, even if they did pay tax mm -hmm. also, you know, the question is, to me, I think, each life, you see, I've seen this happen in uh -huh. the Simple. Mitsubishi gave a small peanut uh, amount. You know, they gave a certain amount to to to, to what as compensation. Is that is that a public amount? How, how much was that? Uh, very simple, small. Uh -huh. for, for for each person affected. No, no. They just gave it to the committee, which was handling the. You know, I, I, although I'm supposed to have knowledge. I we didn't participate in the uh -huh. whole exercise because it didn't work that way. Uh -huh. Public health doesn't work that way. Uh -huh. Public health means what? The first principle in public health is a precautionary principle. Uh -huh. When you are not sure what the impact will be, uh -huh. don't do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't do it because you know people's lives are more important. Just because they are not knowledgeable doesn't mean you can. Just go there, put your factory there, sell the idea that it can be used as a fertilizer. Uh -huh. In the future, you could use it as a nuclear fuel. Uh -huh. You know, till today that doesn't matter. Uh -huh. but I think I, I'm I'm clear about it. Because that's what AE, uh, that's what the, that, that's what the Malaysian uh, authorities are saying, aren't they? That um, they will put the Linus plant there, and then they will keep a watch on what's happening over time. Is that currently the line from there? That's a line, but my question is, you know, is there, is this, is technology is one thing, mm -hmm. does science permit it? Mm -hmm. There's no, ex, no science will permit that you will put, uh, make guinea pigs uh -huh. out of anybody. The term has been bandied, not only guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. One suggestion is let us collect the data after the factory starts, and if it is deleted, yes. Uh, we will stop it. Mm -hmm. Now, first problem is, first principle is that you are talking about a material which has got a half-life of how many, 14 billion years. You know. Your technology, your stopping it will not stop what you have generated. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have generated in say three, four years the waste. Mm -hmm. That waste will have to be disposed. You have no way of disposing the way. You don't know how to dispose of the way. During the process, if at all there's a disposal, you're going to have more problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the question again comes back to we no 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 uh, no professional social responsibility will allow it. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I'm very passionate about the whole thing. It's because I've seen them die in front of me. I've been involved. So uh, 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 they don't go through the pain because these people live remote, in remote places. Perhaps, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what you saw in Bukimera. Um, Bukimera is an unfolding of, it's a legacy. It's very interesting. It, would, you say, would you say it's still dangerous there now? It's still very dangerous. That's why they're cleaning up and they cannot clean it up. How do you clean it? Yeah, I, I tell you, Bukimera actually what happened, I think you, in the book Wasted Life, you can more or less read about when it started, what operations and all. But beyond that, the, the human part of it was that the, the company knew pretty well it was a dangerous technology. They went ahead. They went ahead with this technology. People protested people. The people didn't protest because they were alarmed. Children are falling sick. There were miscarriages. I think you see that in the documents that have been provided. I lived there. Miscarriages, just unexplained miscarriages. Mm -hmm. People were falling sick. Mm -hmm. Mothers were having children born congenitally mm -hmm. defective. Mm -hmm. I read, I read levels of leukemia that were 35 times higher than they should be. Should be. You see, the level of leukemia 
actually you should get for that population in fact I overestimated the number you know when I overestimated I worked on a population of between 11 to 15 thousand mm -hmm. uh, it was not really the population there and I also worked on a, a, a radius of about within less than 10 kilometers mm -hmm. you need to go beyond that or whatever it is mm -hmm. you know I had eight leukemias in a matter of five years Mm -hmm. of which seven have already died. Mm -hmm. I didn't document. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I found it alarming that I actually walked behind that Kawasan Industry Industrial and, and there was a Taman Bajri Shah mm -hmm. and there was, um, there was an Indian community there. And I spoke to some of the Indian families there and some of them who had lived there for longer, maybe 20 years or more, knew about the history you know, of Asian mm -hmm. rarities. And then many, many, many people I spoke to knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And I just... Don't, don't you think that that is that is akin to uh, you know making people commit suicide? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I might be a little bit. The in, the information is available. Mm -hmm. Don't you think you should cordon off that area till you are certain the radioactive levels have come down? To Right. At least that's at least. It's not done. And so and so for my from my side, it's it's I mean, liners can until they're blue in the face explain how high tech their factory is and, and what it has in there. But the simple fact of the matter is it's not the first year of their operation that I'm concerned about. It's not even the first five years. It's the, the twenty years after that, when the issue dies down, mm. there's less political pressure, and I'm concerned how often do the authorities actually come and check, you know, what kind of safeguards are in place? I mean, surely, if Linus are left to their own devices, because surely, you know, I can see a situation where the political pressure dies down, mm -hmm. Linus becomes left to their own devices, mm -hmm. and of course, like any company, they will, they will start cutting corners and they will start engaging in, in risky behaviour. So, um, do you think, what is the, what is the, what is the potential, what, what sort of, um, what, yeah, what sort of will do you think there is in, in say, the AELB and, and other government authorities to actually watch Linus and, and make sure that they're, they're sticking to safeguards? First, 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 first thing is, you know, I mean, the first principle, first principle here should be, you know, not to allow, because mm -hmm. that's a precautionary principle in the whole volume that we are reading, the Cherry Report, you know, mm -hmm. the report. You know. First principle is because uh, the material is is not of local origin. I mean, if there was going to be some benefit for the local origin fame, mm -hmm. the concentrate itself is dangerous coming. You must not forget we are just next to the sea. Mm -hmm. Hardly a kilometer away mm -hmm. is the sea. Mm -hmm. And those these are areas prone to heavy rain, heavy uh, in flooding and all that. What happens to the material that will be washed? Come back to this whole issue. To me, I think all these safeguards are, uh, are difficult to manage. Who is going to ensure continuity, you know, the the it will be forgotten like it is being forgotten you know my information the alb is not even around while the cleaning up is going on in in Pledang, in Bukemera. mainly because who is ensuring knowledge about it itself is so scant who wants to ensure look oh is this the al people around there ensuring no. the public also is quite Again, wherever it comes to insidious poisons, pollutants like this, they don't cause immediate impact. It's in the long term. And here, again, you know, if you look at IAEA and all, they're all physicists. The physicists don't work beyond physics, radiation physics. They don't go into areas of the DNA. They don't go into the areas of, you know, the real cell, how the cell is damaged. They only go in terms of risk modeling, based on whatever study they have from Hiroshima Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And everywhere they underestimate uh, atrocious Chernobyl, you know, Three Mile Island, uh, atrocious Bukashima. The role of I is highly questionable, but doesn't matter, we will not go around. What I'm trying to say is that the, the, the long-term management is suspect. Let it be Linus, let it be Mitsubishi, let it be any, any first world uh, company. You see, interesting, Germany has decided to pass the whole buck to France. You know, know what I mean? They don't want to do any more. I haven't, I haven't heard, sorry, they decided they're not having any technology. Uh, no, not only this technology, anyway, even they're going to stop all the oh, nuclear generation. Nuclear generation. Mm, and they're already depending on France. Mm -hmm. And about France, we don't know. What I'm saying is that they don't, you know, in meaning that, you know, they know that they are the, the, the uh, I mean, topmost engineering country in the world, yet they know the real pitfalls. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about, liners or uh, Mitsubishi or so? The issue, what I'm saying is that when our information is inadequate, then the precautionary principle, oh, wait, what is that? What benefit are you doing because this country is going to get no benefit? You have seen some projection on the, on, on the economic sense it makes. Hmm. Nothing. Linus runs to the bank with a huge amount of money. There are the people there in Gabeng who are going to face that to start with. It doesn't end with Gabeng because this leachate you know, can contaminate the whole area. Mm -hmm. And contamination means you know you might at the end of the day you know, wipe out a huge a whole few generations. It's going to pay the price. The politicians won't be around. People, liners won't be around. Mm -hmm. The people that are left behind, the residents mm -hmm. of the residents of the area. Now, why should they face this risk just because you know Australia doesn't want to do it in its own back? Wants to do it in somebody else's backyard. Absolutely. So you asked me. I'm, I didn't complete. I went on. You asked me a question on uh, the camera. Bukemera, interesting, the difference in Bukemera is that people were unaware till children were falling in. And then information was picked up by NGOs. The NGOs actually spoke to the people. The government of the day never uh, and same as one. Number two, already there was a cause and effect meaning the, there was this waste being generated and the waste was that was being generated became more and more people started more. Actually this is what I raised even at my first meeting mm -hmm. with uh, Linus. Uh -huh. You know that there was a public consultation where I said DOE, Department of Environment, has not taken an issue, has not told us about how they were going to handle lead. Mm. They were caught. Mm. Then the AALB guy comes to their rescue and says, look, I've experimented with the lead. Uh, it's not so much of a problem. I said, no, DOE should answer the question, not you. Mm. Because you could have experimented with DOE. Should. Mm. Anyway, the back to what of lead yeah, nobody has made a mention of lead. Lead is a perverse, toxic material. Children are going to get neurological deficit. It's established as a very dangerous heavy metal. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I believe in the, the chemical process, um, massive amounts of, of very caustic acid gets used as well. Of course, because they need to use the acid for extraction. Mm -hmm. And that, that just comes out through a chimney, right? That's but right. The flu, whatever they call it. See again uh, the comes back to gases. Whatever said and done is one of the case in Bukit Mera was were they releasing dangerous radioactive gases? Shibana Chiganabu. 
have to admit, yes, they were releasing. Mm. I did testing, mm. environmental testing of red horn. We found high levels of, even though it's external, I mean, uh, environmental levels, very high levels pointing towards the factory. So, 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 so just to clarify, thorium stays as a solid, does it? Mm. And then when it breaks down, it produces the gas right on, does so it? So it's not? like this, you know, so well, uh, that's what I, whenever I write, I make it clear. This is actually the whole thorium and even uranium, you know, what they do is within the ore, within the grid, uh, you see these radioactive gases like red ore, the two types of red ore, actually are caught within the grid lock, mm -hmm. they are caught. Mm -hmm. The moment you crush it, mm -hmm. you release it, mm -hmm. because that's a natural way of decay. Mm -hmm. I see decays is what happens. You open up the uh, gridlock and you open up the you open up the hall. What happens is it escapes. You know, it doesn't mean that thorium when it is, you know, as a byproduct. But basically because of the nature of this whole radioactivity mm -hmm. that goes on this whole process, you know. Small, small explosion. So what happens is so the material itself stores all these radioactive gases within them. But they emanate very slowly and then they decay, forming final product lead. They mm -hmm. decay and form the final product. That's why we have lead. What really happens is that this, when you break the wall, you're releasing these gases, which are in, in, in a stable uh, association with the ore, you know, mm -hmm. they, they remain in the ore. It's mm -hmm. just like if you go to Mount Kuala, mm -hmm. you leave Mount the ore alone, you might at the most get some amount of red ore and mm -hmm. ore coming out, mm -hmm. which might disperse. But as soon as you start to cut out this, this cut out the thing, uh -huh. you break the thing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh -huh. You know what you do is you release this radioactive. This is this was given in court himself by Redford, you know, Edward Redford. That this is what really happens. Mm -hmm. So basically, the same thing. You can talk about all the systems in the world mm -hmm. where you have scrubbers, you have got HEPA filters, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then just but simply by mucking around with this stuff, you are automatically mm -hmm. introducing risk mm -hmm. into, the into the, this. You're just mucking around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then. Uh, uh, you mean to say, wherein lies the problem? Mm -hmm. In nature, it is already there. Mm -hmm. See, another issue that needs to be understood, which I've also mentioned, is that uh, you see, the, the, this material is called technologically enhanced naturally occurring, uh, uh, naturally occurring radioactive material. What it really means, it really means is that say even uranium for that matter, mining of uranium, mining, you know, so what you do, what you do in the process of breaking it down into remove extracting rare earth, extracting say even uranium, what you do is you technologically enhance the radioactivity by concentrating, breaking open the ore. You know, that's what you really do. It doesn't make the radioactivity go away just because it is naturally occurring, mm -hmm. you know. Just because it's... So the, the, the feeling is, the thing is, oh, it's naturally occurring. In the natural, uh, this thing, it doesn't cause a problem. How could it cause a problem? The problem comes because you're disturbing. You are technology enhancing, technologically enhancing the Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's where the problem mm -hmm. comes. Okay. And, 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 and what, what is the actual pathway to making people sick? Is that it comes out as dust and, and, and the, it gets lungs the, and Yeah, inhalation. You see, the, the biggest problem here would be inhalation and ingesting. Mm -hmm. stuff, you know? the thorium per se, actually thorium per se, as a heavy metal will settle in the bones. Mm -hmm. you know? They will settle in the bones, being heavy metal just like lead. In fact, one of my testing was I was doing lead testing. Actually, I was not looking for lead. 
I was just doing the lead test to try and work out how much of thorium would have been ingested. Because if you can trace the lead, then you can have they a They both work the same way. And uh, we had a toxicologist called Brian Gibson from the uh, Canada mm -hmm. who worked out how much would be ingested. See, there's so much of lead allowing for other sources of lead. So it worked out too. What we found is high levels of lead, which means high levels of thorium. Now the problem is, once it's deposited in these places, this thing, they are very close to very vital structures, the cell structures, and small explosions take place. And the energy that is created in this, in this process when it comes to, although it's the so-called alpha, but the energy that is created in its in the, the state is so massive it can cause serious damages and enhanced damages within the cell, resulting in a number of things that we are seeing. That's how it works. External radiation is just like you know, uh, announced background radiation. Mm -hmm. Say you go for an X ray, mm -hmm. one millisecond zero. You know, mm -hmm. for an X ray. Mm -hmm. the, f the the worry is only when you're pregnant or when your immune system is down. Mm -hmm. Over time, you could have problem. Many times, your body, can, if you're healthy, can handle it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the problem comes with the internally deposited material, which we are not even, we don't know the extent of it. We are not factoring the extent of it. And therein lies the danger. And there is, therein comes the criticism of ICRP, International uh, Commission on Radiological Protection, which is the basis of all these estimates, IEEE, all of them, because basically they're using estimates for external radiation. They will have one small part on internal radiation, but they will never factor it because understanding itself is very poor. Research in that area is still very new, yeah, is it? Very poor. There's no need. Technology doesn't warrant any research in there. And if anybody does a research in that, it will be for public health purposes. Like Padmanam and one of them. I we did it in we did it in in Kerala. We looked at genetic disturbances in the people lying in, I mean staying within this monocyte belt, <laughs> very in Kerala. In Kerala, in India? In India, a very high belt of monocyte. Monocyte is the substance, same substance. The whole under the ground. And that's right. Lanthanide they call it. They want to give different names to those people, but that doesn't make the material benign. In, in, in the Hooky Mera case, do you think the government was quite successful in being able to say this is a Chinese community kicking up fuss mm -hmm. and, and because it was, you know, the, the problem was very much isolated to that Chinese community. Do you think the rest of the country, perhaps the Malay majority, had difficulty sort of, um, certainly there was there was a part of their brain that, that said, oh, maybe it is the Chinese kicking up fuss and trying to make trouble for the government? How do you think race plays in this? So the, the, you see, the Bukamara issue, to be fair, uh, because of, uh, because the, the, what you call the, the information was contained. It was contained in terms of, uh, uh, the science part of it has never been really discussed. The public health impact has never been disclosed. Mm -hmm. What has been disclosed is all the violences, the right. protests, right. Right. all the protests, uh -huh. and then the assembly, the incarceration of some of them under ISA mm -hmm. and everything. The bit that lives in the public memory is that much. So, so people, since again, you know, as, uh, as you put it, as long as it is not in your backyard, and as long as you know, the main media, the media, the uh, media plays it as, you know, some troublemakers, some people who are uh, causing a hue and cry over there. And numbers, you know. See, if I go and tell people, oh, eight leukemias, hey, what is eight leukemias? 
But if I say, you know, you should get one leukemia in 30 years, then people perk up. It's never been done that way. And of course, when I, when I hear that figure, eight leukemias, I think, well, that's, that's eight people who have fallen, or certainly, certainly seven, who have fallen fatally sick. Mm. So if those person, people have passed away, then the number who have suffered any level of damage, any level of damage, You're right. must be huge. That's, that's must be huge. huge. But see the 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 other thing is you see the problem with this sort of uh, polluted in the sense that it's like the the uh, the traffic uh, traffic uh, policeman who's using at those days they used to use not lasers they were using X-ray mm -hmm. to check the speed. Okay. <laughs> really, don't stand on the side of the road. <laughs> That's right. Really okay. okay. And uh, um, uh, unfortunately, there was a big debate. You know, people warned them. They said, "Nothing is happening to me." Till somebody developed cancer, it's gone out. <laughs> you know, but by the time the damage is manifest, it's many years. Relating it also is one problem. That secondly, also. When you get CIAEA coming here, it's a reputable agency. The IAEA says Iran is stockpiling this thing. Everybody will believe IAEA because that's their self-appointed people, you know, very select people who think they have the conscience and that they are independent. And therefore the, what they say is really independent. So what happens to the people who believe that? So IAEA had come here. In fact, in court, the IAEA supported Mitsubishi. Mm -hmm. No one not to consult and support it. I just, I'm always flabbergasted to read through the book, um, Wasted yeah. Lives, and to see how it just reads like, like a script, mm -hmm. this replaying now. Mm -hmm. AELB approves. Excellent. The public doesn't agree. IAEA comes out and says, no, we agree with AELB. It's, it's, it's like a... It's Same, like a it's a script. You say, again, you know, they're talking about uh, uh, this license. What license? It's a pre-operating license. Mm -hmm. They're talking pre-operating license. See, IAEA is also interesting, you know. They, we challenged them. We were there at a meeting. We challenged them. They were very defensive. Our challenge was simple. We turned around and said, we have no confidence in you. Mm -hmm. Why? Chernobyl? It's on record, you are underestimated. Fukushima, you have underestimated, you know, and then even three mile you have underestimated. Mm -hmm. Secondly, your mandate is only on radiation safety. Right. It's on radiation safety. They admitted. And we said the Academy of Science, the US Academy of Science says there's no safe levels. Mm -hmm. Do you admit? Mm -hmm. Linus is saying that zero radioactivity. What do you say? They agree. That's not true. Because otherwise there's no role for IAEA or EALB mm -hmm. in the first place, isn't it? Why are you there to assuage people if there was zero radioactivity? Mm -hmm. So the question is again comes back you know, that then it's just playing, you know. Mm -hmm. And how foolish can any government be, mm -hmm. you know, compromising public health, mm -hmm. just because, yeah, anything, uh, no, 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 just because you want, you see, one of the arguments by MIT is that downstream industries. Sorry, what are the Downstream industries. Arguments by who? Uh, MIT, MIT, uh, International Trade, you know, the people responsible for bringing in here, bringing them and uh, allowing for the licensing. Mm -hmm. Now, Ministry of International Trade and uh, Industry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the 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 argument is that there's downstream industries. Mm -hmm. Now, downstream industries means what? You know? This industry gives rise to other. That it doesn't mean that there are other industries and they are going to benefit from this activity. Mm -hmm. So. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not only wrong, I think you're confusing people. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the material itself is not 
local. Mm-hmm. You're going to bring the material uh, from. I mean, if, if anything, I was thinking that's at least Bukit Merah was Malaysian materials. Mm-hmm. At least that was that was radiation that came from Malaysia and was used in Malaysia. You know, at least at least Asian rare earth, from what I read, was owned by some Malaysians. At least there were some Malaysians that's who right. owned shares. Yeah, nothing. Well, Linus is is a dangerous material coming from another country, uh, owned by a company who is, by the looks of it, entirely uh, foreign owned. None of it owned by Malaysians at all. No. I mean, uh, you, they haven't declared any local ownership. No. Anyway. So going back, that they own. Uh-huh. But whatever is said and done is, if you have, see, and what I think is. You know, Trangano government refused it. Mm-hmm. They were and did they refuse it at the time Pass was administrating Trangano? No, this was when Amno. Amno. So that's that's curious, isn't me. it? Yeah, curious, isn't it? Why is it? You know. So again, comes back to to you know to one important thing that a very short-sighted mm-hmm. policy mm-hmm. people who only think in terms of foreign direct investment. We want foreign direct investment. Doesn't matter at what, 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 what cost. At what cost. Mm-hmm. You know, it means jobs. Mm-hmm. You see? Jobs. Again, you know, ultimately what's going to happen to Linus if at all they operate? We're going to get foreign workers there. That's right. That's right. And no kind of a guarantee at all that Malaysians will work there. They won't. Given the amount of information by now there, they're not going to work there. Mm-hmm. And the, you know, you, you see, the Australian point here is very interesting. Miners in Australia are paid handsomely. What they do, they have sort of administrative control. What do you mean by administrative? They work for a extent for a period, then they take a break. Mm-hmm. They make a lot of money, take a break, then they come back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sort of an administrative control that goes on, mm-hmm. which is not good either. But the point is, you know, they know the risk. Mm-hmm. The miner knows the risk mm-hmm. he's going to face. Mm-hmm. So what he does is, he's prepared to take the risk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, you know, many people uh, trade off lives. Right. Mm-hmm. But here, these people, uh, one is, but now it seems they're more informed. No? Uh-huh. Our survey suggests they're more informed. If I will be going around giving them more information. But beyond that, they uh, might not even be employed there. Mm-hmm. But they'll be recipients of all your mm-hmm. you know, the damage. Damage. So why? Mm-hmm. You know, where is the uh, <laughs> where is the what do you call honor it's, in it? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Like you really, really, really have to struggle <laughs> to find any payoff at all <laughs> for regular Malaysians, right? Um, and you asked me a question about uh, compensation. Mm-hmm. Where is compensation is like as I told you a trade uh, trade off. You know, just now I said if it's a miner, say he's a miner, mm-hmm. the Australian miner for instance, there's a nice program on him. The Australian miner is told, look, there are a lot of risks. You know, but we pay you very well. Mm-hmm. So he decides, okay, I'll take the risk because my family needs it. But that's an individual choice, you know. Of but when it comes to policy makers, policy makers should not even allow that. Mm-hmm. Do you know why? At the end of the day, it's in, 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 inhumane. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, just for a little bit of pecuniary benefit, mm-hmm. don't put anybody at risk. Harm's way. Mm-hmm. Here it looks ridiculous, double ridiculous. You bring the material mm-hmm. all the way here and then you tell everybody, look, we've got a safety system, uh, a pristine safety system. No amount of pristine safety system can... See, this is the beauty about this material. It comes in the form of invisible rays and, of course, particulates. Mm -hmm. These particulates are tiny particulates which can go in as well, Mm -hmm. which you'll never be able to avoid. And basically, where is the, where is the, you know, uh, what do you call, where is the, why should you put people in arms way? The best principle here is a precautionary principle, don't have it. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to lose anything. Mm-hmm. At the best, you're going to gain a lot of public 
sympathy you are going to get. See, politically, again, you ask me a question which I never completed, I went off. Politically, you, you ask me about uh, the government trying to say it is Chinese. Mm -hmm. The Kwanta and Phyllis are all Chinese. Mm -hmm. They are the ones also protesting. And now the Malays are joining. Uh -huh. Malays are joining, basically because they are knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And not only already available about Bukit Mera, which mm -hmm. has been disseminated by NGOs, you know. So naturally they are more informed. Mm -hmm. Although the government chooses not to do so. You know, try and pull wool over people's eyes. You don't do that. You know, because again, vulnerable. This government is vulnerable. Because you can't go on, you know, just because you want some form of foreign direct investment you bring in these sort of dirty industries. Mm -hmm. And people will start to wake up to this, won't they? That people, start, people will start to see what's going on. Definitely. They will never trust you. What do you think is probably the best strategy from this point on for trying to get miners out of Malaysia? How, how do people need to, in terms of uh, activism, and in terms of lobbying, and in terms of politics of it, what's the best approach now? Well, see, to, the, you, to me, I must declare that to me, Linus must be stopped. Mm -hmm. I'll declare. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about any repercussions over that. Why it must be stopped? Because of my experience in Bukemera and because I'm well informed. Mm -hmm. Reasonably informed, I would say very well informed. Mm -hmm. Reasonably informed. Okay, so I, that's the position. Starting from that position, strategy has got to be multifold. You know why? Like we are doing. For instance, so our strategy should be first is what's the best in best thing to do? Inform the people who are likely to be affected immediate. I mean, when I immediate mean you know the nearer vicinity, inform them. And once you inform people, people have their way of you know they could do it in the hustings, you know, the elections. They could do it by way of their own community, small community. They have mosques community, the Karyas, the community, they can raise it, they can raise it with their politicians, they can raise it with the community leaders, they can raise it. So that's people's activity. Beyond people's activity, I think what you really need is take up whatever possible ways you could stop them, legal. You might ask me the question, do you have faith? Do you have faith? It might be a delaying process, process, you know, we could delay the thing by... And one of the good things about uh, legal cases is that a lot of information can come in. Mm -hmm. That's what happened in the camera. You force, you force the information out. You bring it out. You bring, force people to give information, you know, and uh, also force people to, you know, and this information can be disseminated to the point uh, where even if the courts say, well, you can go ahead, people, well, that's what happened in Bukit Mera. Mm -hmm. The court said, yes, you can go on. But it didn't matter, information was out already. Uh, already out there, Mitsubishi itself decided to compensate and get out. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're cleaning up. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that that's another strategy. Beyond that strategy, I think you need the political part of it. The political, not in terms of voting alone, but but ensuring there's a process in which uh, these sort of issues, environmental issues, green issues, like you have the Green Party, in, you need to get this sort of thing going because politicians, especially you know, on both the white, might be very narrow on this issue of uh, direct investment, foreign direct investment. You see, when I went for my the first consultation, public consult, as invited by one politician. Uh, the politician from the same group also said, look, we are not against foreign direct investment. You know? So meaning that uh, they, might, they might not view it in the larger perspective of uh, whether it's foreign you know, direct investment with social responsibility. Social responsibility partner would be is corporate responsibility rather is really uh, poor in this country.
So when there's corporate responsibility, you know, you see, here again there are ways out. First is you declare, have a, memor- uh, a referendum. If people say, look, we don't want it, don't do it. That's yeah. about simple. Mm-hmm. So but what I'm saying is that coming back to your question, it's got a multiple, m- many strategies need to be taken mm-hmm. up. You cannot, it will not be only because of my own, uh, this in Bukit Mera. Uh, court didn't work, uh, you know, politically also the parties were divided, it didn't work. Finally, what worked was in public opinion. Right. So fighting them in the media, fighting them in the politics. Public opinion, not only locally, you know, mm-hmm. even in Japan. Right, right. We went to the Diet, we went to different NGO groups, I went with victims. We, the victims were pictured, you know, films were taken. So much so, what is that? Here we might not have that. Uh, if we don't stop it early enough, we might have it. But if you can stop it early before this time, we might not have that luxury of I won't use the word luxury, sick people. But I know what you mean, yeah. Uh, sick people. But we can actually show the history of people who fell ill, etc. So, really, public opinion in Australia is, is, another, is another battle, isn't it? I mean, very, very. I, I agree. But the, 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 the thing is, you know, that's why I also explained to the group which was taking us, saying that they were in for a court case. And I said that, remember, court cases in many of these countries can be very costly. I'm sure you're following the Scopin case, you know, the Scopin case. It's going to it's cost so much of money just to get through first two, three early, because one court case. Secondly, the material can be sourced not necessarily only from Australia. They have got a place called Malawi, you know. They can get the ore from there. Mm-hmm. Many other people will prepare to give you, especially when they are GNPs, you know. So they will prepare to give you all the material. You can have it for peanut. Mm-hmm. So the process can be circumvented. Maybe you swap Australia, you will be, they can get it from elsewhere. The issue, I think, most important is it's got to be here Mm -hmm. but beyond here they can always go to other countries nearby Mm -hmm. thailand won't agree Mm -hmm. many other nearby countries won't agree Mm -hmm. and uh, we can't say much for indonesia Mm -hmm. so but doesn't matter Mm -hmm. i feel that that's the duty of care Mm -hmm. for all of us to inform everybody Uh and do you think um Really, with Book and Mara, one of the problems was it was just that community fighting, fighting the issue. Really, it's a tremendous effort because of well, true. just that community. community. And um, and I think now you go to Pahang and you look at the, the community around Yemen, and you look at the, 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 the people in Pahang, and, and they seem to me to be quite committed mm. to, to kicking the planet out. They seem to be quite unhappy mm. with it. But to me, it seems like just like the expression you just used, you know, not in my backyard, so mm. I don't care. Mm. And so it seems like. The, the other states of Malaysia, you know, the, the word needs to get out to them because we landed at KLIA and we had a couple of nights in KL before we drove on to Kwantan. And I asked a couple of people on the street, you know, do you, do you, have you heard about this issue in Linus? This issue of Linus. And it seems like in Selangor and, and in other states, the awareness is really low. Mm. And, um, and do you think, you know, maybe if, if other states can understand, look, if, if they're happy to do that to people in Mokimara, and if they're happy to do that to people in Kwantan, they could do it to me just as easily. That's right. You know? you, that's a good point there. So that's the other thing that we need to do, get pe- more people informed. Mm-hmm. So what happens is that, you see, it's becoming a national issue. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why, you see, if it was not a national issue, they wouldn't have announced IAEA, they wouldn't have gone that far. That's when you know it's becoming a national issue, right? Yeah, when they call it IAEA. Yeah, yeah. So what we need to do is, you know, see the IAEA is, I, I warned our politicians who are doing the case, Fuzia, you know, for instance, I told her, don't depend on IAEA, see, they're very reputable mm. in, the many, in the eyes of many people who really don't know. We know the whole history. It's very difficult to go around explaining all this history, ICRP, IAEA, beer, you know, and uh, unscare and all that. 
people won't understand. They just echo me. What you really need to do is from the beginning preempt by saying, we know they will come out with recommendation. They will say it's okay. They will come out with recommendation. Challenge them from the very beginning. That's what we did. We told them we don't trust you. Why? We are not just because we don't like your faces. It's because of your track record. One. Secondly, why do you come and assure people when your mandate is narrow? Your mandate is only radiation safety and that too particular type of radiation, mm -hmm. not the internal type. Mm -hmm. you know, your mandate is very narrow mm -hmm. and you are in, in fact as culpable as the government. No, no, they said we are just a recommending body. Mm -hmm. If you look at their reports, very interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. They are only saying it's safe at the construction phase. Right. They are not talking about the future. Right. Just one phase they are saying it's safe. Right. You know, which, which is very... Misleading. Misleading, isn't it? That means double narrow. Mm -hmm. First you are narrow. Secondly, now you are narrowed it to one, <laughs> one part of uh, the... Time frame. Time frame. Narrow time frame, narrow subject matter. Subject matter. Mm -hmm. I heard, I heard they had a, a press conference where they, they brought out a big chunk of the war. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about this. I never, That's actually, right. I never watched the press conference. Not right. I, 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 there's somebody else. Oh yeah. Linus, somebody Oh yeah. Like and they, they, they brought out a Geiger meter as well and they put the Geiger meter to the hall. Oh, they did it in court case. You're right. The same script worked out in Bukit uh -huh. In court, one of them brought in the ore oh, monocyte and then he did it. See, the GM counter, nothing wrong. So answer to that is, the problem is you're only measuring external radioactivity. Mm -hmm. You're not at all working on the internal part. Mm -hmm. The internal part we have worked out, you know, right. by looking at the lead. Right. You tell us an answer. Mm -hmm. You have two problems now, lead and that particular material. Now you answer. See, that's why I, I, what I, I started out by saying is that we, we must in this, you see, I'm, we must be forewarned. People like us are in a good position to forewarn others, you know, why we live through it. And to be fair, let me tell you, I didn't believe that all this, I, because my understanding of the science as a medical doctor was that uh, X-ray is safe. You know, and it's a very good discipline in the terms that all you need is to ensure that you take precaution. Mm -hmm. So I went on and over difficult for you to 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 desensitize yourself from having been taught, you know, because whoever teaches you talks to you of it as a science. They are not as talking established facts. facts mm -hmm. You know, and the information that we have is final. It's not. The fact is there are, there are areas that are, that are, that are very new and there's, there's, there's and they, that, that is what science is all right we keep unfolding you could have said that uh, the x-ray machine of those days were safe today those x-ray machines will be outlawed <coughs> you know, those days uh, they used to say it's safe to take x-ray in pregnancy mm -hmm. now we'll never allow anybody who's pregnant to take right. x-ray even though we have cut down the dosage to less than one may see. And, and isn't this, this is also an example of uh, risk and reward. Um, if you have an x-ray, obviously you're subjecting yourself to some risk by letting the doctor x-ray you. But the reward is the doctor gets insight into what's wrong with you. It's precisely. It's a and fracture, uh, for instance. Uh, not only a fracture, uh, TV. So there's a reward for risk suffered. Of course. And, uh, uh, and then they, of course, will tell you even if you travel uh, by flight, you know, you get some amount of radiation. My reward is I get home. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right, but precisely the point is, uh, it doesn't make you not counted as a right. victim of uh, cancer. You can still get cancer uh -huh. on account of having done so many flights. Uh -huh. you know, except the fact is, I'm informed about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. form. Uh -huh. I'm prepared to take uh -huh. the risk. That's a different situation. Here, the people are completely innocent people who don't even know what's going on. They just hear, you know, two sides of the picture. Then you get an international organization, highly reputable organization coming there. Well, it's safe. 
and they don't tell you the truth. They save for this part of it and only that part. And also save because this is our understanding. You must declare this our understanding in the light of this knowledge. One. Number two is only limited to this. And that doesn't mean the whole factory is safe. Mm. They didn't say that. See, in my, if you go through the, um, we, we did a recording of our meeting with IAEA. Mm -hmm. I started them by asking them, besides saying, I said, do you have children? We got to that word. I said, yeah, I have two children, three children. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you been a party to seeing children die? Mm -hmm. And then they got very worried. One of them came, two of them came aside to me and said, don't, please la, don't accuse us of being insensitive. I said, you are. Uh, uh. And I can bet you at the end of it, you'll still come out recommending it safe. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because right. you've seen this, Dr. Jaya, I mean, in the 1980s. I've seen it. I've taken the victim, in fact, I took a victim, two of the victims, two or three of the victims to Japan. Yeah, I took a risk. I, was, I took a risk. The reason was we needed to have the emotive part of it. Of course. You know, and that worked. Mm -hmm. That emotive part worked. And I, by, you know, these people died, mm -hmm. but ultimately we have saved. Mm -hmm. And the production, mm -hmm. the continued production would have meant more people falling ill. You know, whereas the mid waste, as it is there, can still be contained in one sense. If you do not disturb the mm -hmm. waste, you will still get radiation, enhanced radiation, but it's something which can be monitored, as you said. Mm -hmm. You know, the moment there are increases, you've got to find out why they increase. Are there any other? Many things can be done. Shielding can be done. Mm -hmm. People can be evacuated, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it goes by, uh, the nearer you are, more dangerous it is. Evacuate, you've done that many a time. Mm -hmm. Evacuate people and say, remove them further away, that's administrative work. Mm -hmm. you, you have a mistrust of the administration in this country? You, you don't trust them to... No. I, I, mean, I mean, I just, I'm amazed people are still settling in that area. I, I'm amazed that area is not being desettled. No, that's the reason is simple, you see, because of the... See, one of the things that we must understand, like the miners taking the risk, many of these marginalized, it'll be Indians, it'll be really squatters who go and stay there because and land value will be very poor. You know what I mean? So these people go there, prepared to take the risk because they have no option. Mm -hmm. Poor Indians have what? They are the poorest of the three communities. Mm -hmm. What do they do? They got their land now, very cheap quarters. They will go and rent the thing mm -hmm. uh, there and stay there with the hope that they won't be struck. Mm -hmm. Everybody has got this hope, you know, and then you know, like especially if you have religious belief and you have all this sort of faith, you always, faith is something which, you know, is undying. <laughs> mm -hmm. People feel, look, I won't uh, be the one, will be not the victim till it strikes a bit too late. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's about it. That's, that's, that's how you can see it playing out, right? Mm. And don't you think it is a responsibility of the administration of the government to ensure that people are informed of course. and that they're not only informed, they're told that, you know, there's an element of risk and this risk, you know, the only way you can mitigate is stay away. You know? Do you think, you think that people are angry enough for the government to suffer some damage in this desolation? There's a relation that are fairly close around the corner, isn't there? If Gabeng goes on. Right. And if it goes on, really, they go ahead with Japan. Mm -hmm. And if the information that is reaching people, from the way I see, they will definitely be in the trouble. Be in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's my my. What you say? Mm, they will be big trouble mm -hmm. because, because you it know. Just, it just seems like you know it, you really struggle in in Palm. You really struggle in Kwantan to find anybody that thinks it's a good idea. They don't think so. I don't think so. Even the Malays, as you said uh -huh, in your uh -huh, note, uh -huh. 
Even the Malays are getting informed. Mm-hmm. You know why? This, the NGOs have done a good job. Mm-hmm. And this should be the role of the government, not the NGOs. Mm-hmm. You know, why should the NGOs do it? That's right. <laughs> the government it's, it's, it's the democratic responsibility That's of right. the government to, to, to announce We vote this. you in for what? Mm-hmm. To damage our health? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? No, that's that's been a fairly wide ranging discussion and you should have a very good sort of joke. We've lost in that with the news. Mm. We hope we're hoping to